So I recently came across an article that was talking about the 2022 Asian Games. And yeah, I know we a gadget channel, we a mobile channel here. Why in the world would a degenerate like me care about some like physical Olympics kind of thing? Hear me out guys, hear me out. If I scroll down, there are some pretty interesting things that have been introduced to these 2022 Asian Games. So my dudes, have a look at this. Mind Sports, where we have Bridge, Chess, Esports, Go and Shang-Chi. Esports, yes, that esports. So let's have a click in and see which games are going to be representing the field of esports. It's actually quite exciting. And so my guys, here we are. We have medaled events, which is utterly insane because that means that people are going to be getting medals if they can win first, second, or third in these eight games. So we are going to have PUBG, Dota 2, Hearthstone, League of Legends, FIFA, Street Fighter 5, Arena of Valor and Dream of Three Kingdoms 2. And thank you Justin Wong for the subscribe. A lot of these titles are very, very familiar. We've got Dota 2, Hearthstone, League of Legends, even like FIFA and Street Fighter 5, like you could in another world see Tekken in, in there. But what I do want to bring attention to is PUBG Mobile, Arena of Valor, as well as Hearthstone. In a nutshell, these are mobile games. Mobile games in esports, that's, that is awesome. And so my guys, that is going to be the focus of today mobile games in esports. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace and today we're gonna to be talking about esports in mobile games, but not just mobile games. I wanna go through all the way actually to gacha games. I wanna talk about the current mobile games that do have an esports scene. I wanna talk about the regions that have esports scene with mobile games. However, I actually want to talk about all of this to lead up to looking at gachas and their potential in esports. Because as most of you will know, gachas, some of them could have uneven playing fields or some other factors which inhibit them from being in esports. And so without further ado, let's talk about some of the games, the mobile games that actually have an esports scene because it's it's honestly really exciting to see. I know there are a lot of gamers that still struggle with the concept of like competitive mobile games, especially like PC and console players where it's just quite hard to believe like mobile games can be played competitively. I honestly completely disagree. And the, my first showcase is this one here, Mobile Legends Bang Bang Official. For you guys who don't know this game it is pretty much a MOBA remarkably similar to like your Dota or your League of Legends very much the same genre three lanes with the objective of capturing your enemy's base so as you can see up here and generally up to five players you've got skills abilities you've got all of this like mechanics going on with the brushes with the bushes I mean that grants you invisibility items potions all of that right so it's very much the MOBA genre however my guys I am not bringing this up so that I can show you some of this gameplay I want to actually show you some of the statistics behind the viewership and so if i come back over to the mlbb youtube page i wanted to show you guys this one over here id which stands for indonesia grand final at 1.2 million views streamed that is honestly such a massive viewership and then you've got english as well as filipino and then yada 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 but the fact remains is that there are so many viewers of a competitive esports mobile game. And to be honest, this is quite telling, right? You've got your ID, you've got your PH, Filipinos. If I come up here, it's very, very similar for the Women's Invitational. You've got the Tagalog one over here, Bahasa Melayu. And if I did say all of that wrong, I am so sorry. I am not very well versed in Indonesian. But you can see where I'm getting at, right? Like we've got the Southeast Asian companies, which traditionally actually game on their mobile phones because they don't have access all the space for like computers. A lot of the time, mobile gaming is actually preferred because it's just the most convenient and cheap way to do it. And so that to me, MLBB, I think it's freaking awesome. The fact that they are developing an esports scene, although it is predominantly in the Southeast Asian market. With that, my guys, I do want to move on to the next one, which is Arena of Valor. Very much the same genre, we've got a 5v5 MOBA on mobile. So if you guys were paying attention, Arena of Valor is actually one of the eight games that will be featured as an esports at the 2022 Asian Games. And so the interesting thing about Arena of Valor is the fact that it is actually the global version of a massive, massive Chinese game. As you can see over here, Arena of Valor is an international adaptation of Honor of Kings. And if I flip over to Honor of Kings, you will see that as of November 2022, the game has over 100 million daily active players. And if I come over to Billy Billy and look up Honor of Kings in China,
Chinese, of course, you are going to see that there are actually, in fact, esports leagues going on. There are certainly competitive matches, RNG. If anyone plays League of Legends, that should be a familiar name. And just going into the YouTube channel, I do believe that there are so many clips, so many VODs of these championships and competitive matches playing out. As you can see, that's like 239k views. We've got 148k, 225k views, 651k views. Honestly, that is a lot of people. And so it's at this point, you're probably like, okay, Papa Lace, I get it. I get it. Mobile esports, it's a thing. It's real. And to that, I say, I haven't even touched on PUBG Mobile. And we already know how freaking insanely big that one is going to be. And so with that, I want to move on to the next thing, which is gachas in a competitive environment. Because there certainly are going to be massive challenges in gacha games for competitive esports. I think let's talk about the most obvious one, which is the fact that there is going to be gear and stat disparity depending on the amount that you have spent. As we all know, games such as Epic 7, Genshin Impact, where you can technically pay to win a little bit, Grand Blue Fantasy, FGO, Summoner's War, you can spend and you can probably get more stats, whether it be like getting more chances in rolling for RNG equipment or unlocks unbinds. That of course is probably the biggest inhibitor to like the esports in gacha gaming's thriving. However, what I do want to say is that some of these companies, some of these games have actually managed to kind of overcome that. So here is our first example. Epic 7 World Arena Championship, also known as the E7WC, which has a total prize money of $50,000. Honestly, this is pretty nutty. This is pretty freaking cool because like this turn-based kind of battle system as well as the format, it does actually enable this kind of event to happen. And so just a quick clip to see what exactly that looks like. We've got two parties, one on the left-hand side, one on the right-hand side. And as you can see, there are actually in fact commentators as well, but let me skip back a bit to show you guys the game. Gameplay. Active battle system on the left hand side based on speed. And then as each character is cycled through, they are able to take a turn. Boom. And then we go down again. And then we just keep progressing with the characters taking their turns. However, I do want to show you guys this part over here, which is probably half of the entire game drafting. As you can see, as far as we can tell, these characters are generally completely maxed out. So technically speaking, they should be at maximum power. Either Smilegate gave them a developer account or something to use, or they had the money to max it out. I don't know. If you guys do play E7 and did follow the E7WC, let me know. But seeing the gacha games in its infancy, like it reminds me a lot of League of Legends. So if you guys didn't know, League of Legends, which has one of the biggest competitive esports scene, used to have this kind of rune system and you would actually have to play a significant amount of game time before you can like unlock or buy these runes and so therefore what that meant was that newer players were technically at a disadvantage against older players although to be honest like the discrepancy wasn't overly much obviously riot games has done away with this kind of rune system for many many years now they recognized that obviously an even playing field is essential to building an esports scene and so i think that is 100 percent the first step if the developers do want to actually enter the esports scene, which some of them clearly do considering we have an E7WC, then we need to certainly start there. However, Epic 7 is not the first ones to actually do this. One of the biggest ones at least is the SWC, the Summoner's War Cup. Scrolling down a little bit, you guys are going to notice the total prize of 210,000 USD and I believe that was two years ago. So honestly, there's a pretty big chance that the prize pool is even bigger now. And so this one is really cool because there are also technically regional cups as well. Asia Pacific, we got Europe and Americas. And to just show you like some of like how these WCs go down, world championships go down, you can already see that it is very similar to Epic 7 where there is certainly a draft phase and then we go into the battle itself. On top of that, there also technically is a pre-ban phase where you could like either take out some of the characters from the pools. This definitely shakes up the game a little bit because you may be removing like meta comps or meta characters required for some particular comp. I personally think that this is so interesting because like you can do this. You can certainly do this for those turn by turn gacha games. However, what about the games that are more involved, a little bit more like action required and input? So I'm talking about games like GBF, Dragalia Lost, FGO, even Princess Connect. And I certainly think that there is room for these more PVE oriented games with a little bit of action input, if not a lot, for the esports scene. So over here, what I have is a grand final of a Honkai Impact 3 championship. 
So if I play through a little bit, I believe they still don't have their PC client here. So everybody is probably like mobile gaming. And skipping ahead, we are going to see a couple of the contestants. They are going to go in and fight the boss. Very much a PvE match. How fast can you burn down the boss? And then comparing these time attacks. Again, all factors held constant, whether it be gear, level, and all of that. I can certainly see games like Honkai Impact, even Punching Grey Raven. Princess Connect, GBF, Dragalia, Lost Dragalia certainly has something like this, Raids. All of these kinds of games employing a very similar system for a competitive format. Honestly, I was surprised and not surprised that Asia Pacific would actually have hosted a Honkai Championship, but to be honest, I was pretty upset to see that they had not held one for like since then, I believe. Although that could certainly be because of COVID. I don't know, I haven't talked to them before. For, I guess we'll see. I mean, like on top of all of these games, there are even outliers such as Guardian Tales where you do have the real time PvP, but it is actually action oriented. Like, if you look at this, this is a 1v1, and essentially it's you versus another player. You're running around the map, you're literally fighting each other with a whole bunch of units. So, I think it's pretty straightforward what is going on here. You're trying to whack them, they're trying to whack you, and eventually one of you are going to die. For this format over here, you have three characters and you just cycle through them until the next one is dead. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward, right? Like you're trying to take down the enemy team. It is action oriented. Like there is nothing more esportsy than this, right? It is pretty much like a MMO PvP or even like a PvP in terms of like CSGO, but with chibi pixel characters that can do magic and throw dragons instead. Okay, I don't know if it's entirely like CSGO, but I think you guys get the point, right? And then for my last exhibit, Alchemy Stars over here. We are all familiar with this heavyweight or PvP kind of esque game mode. And so essentially what's going on here is that we have one team on the right hand side and another team on the left hand side. And this could most certainly fall into the turn by turn gameplay. Because after we make a move, they make a move. So we just made a move, we use our active skills and then now the computer is making their move. They can use all of their skills and then they can do a run around the board depending on what they want to do. You'll see that they are activating all of their active skills over here. So Luis down here has just used her skill. Now we've got Paloma using her skill and then we've got Cascutter using her skill and they decided to just move one square. Now it is our turn again and away we go. So much PvP esports potential here, right? Like there are just so many possibilities, especially with all of these different mechanics and different elements. I think that there is certainly opportunity here for Alchemy Stars. However, with that, I think that pretty much brings us to the end of this entire video. And so my guys, let me know what you think of esports in mobile games and potentially even gadgets. Because although in a lot of these games, we actually don't prefer PvP, where PvP a lot of the time is actually determined by who has spent the most money, from an equalized esports perspective, I do think, I do think that there is a possibility and a possibility of it being great. And so my guys, let me know how you feel about all of this down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. If you did like this video, then please consider a like. And if you would like to see more, then please consider a subscribe. I do try to make these videos every week or two. And so stay tuned. But otherwise, my guys, as your girl Diane once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.